in this video we're going to look at here specifically at this bar chart but more specifically look at the ticks here or at the labels on the x-axis right now we have here only uh, one showing after we don't show anything and then again we show it and this is created with some specific code and this is one of the viewers question how can we reduce the amount of labels on the x-axis so this is a very useful skill if you have too many of your labels on your x-axis to reduce the amount and this also is soft coded meaning if you would add up new bars it will automatically work with this interval of showing one and then removing the other so i hope you're excited let's explore how to do this in this video we're going to focus on one of the viewers question which is how to reduce the label ticks in the x-axis in chart.js all right so to understand this, basically what we refer to label ticks is basically the labels at the x-axis. And instead of showing a certain amount, we want to reduce them. So let's start and explore how to do this. But before that, I just want to show you where this question came from. So it was one of my other videos related to the Quadrants plugin, where we learn how the Quadrants plugin works, which is a quite interesting topic, by the way. And then in here, if you scroll down, you can see here, we can, so a special thank you for we can for asking the question. This is the following, what he says. Hi, sir, can you please help me? I have 12 labels in my x-axis, but I only want to display six labels in my x-axis. So how can I do that in chart.js? Yes. Can you make a video? Yes, of course we can. All right, so let's start and here. Let's go back here. Let's start to create our chart first. I assume in your case, you have a bar chart or you have maybe a line chart, basically a Cartesian axis, but not a scatter chart. So this is very important. If you have a scatter chart, you have to let me know. Then I might ch have to change the video because this is really specifically pinpoint to line chart, bar chart, a Cartesian structure with basically the category, meaning these here with categories where we have all these labels. Very important. So in here, let's go to getting started, or let's go here first. This is version, the latest version, 3.4.1. And in here, I'm going to grab this, copy, paste. All right, so we've got that one. The next thing what I want to do is I want to go to getting started here. I'm going to copy all of this. So we have these items here. This is the link, so I have to put the link here. All right, then I want to copy this to grab all this. And just change this here. Give this a proper indentation. All right. Then what I want to do is here, I want to give this a class because I want to give, assign a fixed width to this. So we say here, chart box as a class and then here style. And here basically class chart box. And then here the property of uh, width 700 pixels. So save that, refresh. There we are. There we have it. So now what I want to do is I want to move around this. I want to first put this in the right order. Very important to do. This is always very good practice. So I'm going to build the three building blocks here. These are the three blocks. Documentation is working based on this as well. So we have the setup block. And then we have here, we have the, uh, the, what is that, the configuration block. And finally, we have the init slash render block. So let's put in all of these in here. Here the setup block will be a constant data equal. And here we put in everything. All right, just grab everything here from the data, except the data uh, value here. But your data, data what is that? This is the data, I have no idea. The object, I guess the data object is probably the right term. But we don't need that one or the namespace, the namespace, that's the term right there. So we don't need this in here so once we have this we put it in the config because that part will be related to the config and the config block const config consists of what i would call the chart building blocks or the skeleton on the bare bones these are type data and the options cut that out paste it in here change this and just put in here comma because data equals data so then it's same no problem for that finally initialization block we're going to put in here the uh, constant of the ID name. So that's we're going to grab this one equals this. And then we say here new, we're going to make a new property of a constructor. 
This is a constructor, not a property. Parentheses here instead of curly braces, you can see the difference. And in here, we can type in the following uh, document dot get element by ID. And then here, ID name will be my chart, exactly the same. This we can skip because it's already given. Chart.js understands that this is a canvas, it has the codes already built in. All right, and then here we say here content. There we have it, we have everything here. Save this first to make sure that we have this. All right, everything works, but our coding structure has been different. So, where are we going to focus on now? So, uh, his case here for we can, if I'm not mistaken, it was 12 items. As you can see, 12 labels in the x-axis. All right, let's build this and duplicate this to make it 12. Uh, we're going to grab all of this. I'm just going to, these are in total of six data points in the array, so I'm going to mail, make this 12 now. And here are the labels, exactly the same. And the background color can maintain like this. The reason why is it will automatically pick up, it will look through the background color by default in Chart.js. As you can see, once it sees it, it will look it through. All right, we have this here. So I can understand maybe you want to reduce the amount of labels because it's getting too crowded. The bigger your chart becomes, the more crowded it becomes, so you want to reduce that. So how do we reduce this? Well, we're, we're talking here about the x-axis. So here are the scales here, and we need to go in here, comma, and then we have here the x-axis. And in here, what we're really dealing with is the labels here. But these labels on the x-axis are called ticks. So if I scroll down here on the axis, you go here, we have the Cartesian axis, and then we go here, the Cartesian axis, or the category axis. Basically, what we have is a real category. Because you can see here, we have all of these items here. So, what we're going to do here is, we're going to look for the ticks. Uh, scroll down more. I guess this is the one, but let me check here. It's not really in the documentation, by the way. But, however, the ticks is referred to the term here. So, let's see if I can find ticks so you have the understanding of it. Once you understand the name, it's easier to figure out. All right, so we have here the, you can see here, options, scales, and an X. This is the scale ID, which is the X or Y. We, we have to select on the X axis, and then we go here on ticks. Let's see, can we find the ticks object? There you have it. Ticks is an object as well. All right, so that's an object. So we click on that, and then you have here all of these options, but this is what we need, the ticks, all right? So we say here, then here on this, ticks, here, you will not find the answer. Sadly enough, they don't have it yet here. I guess it's new. I'm not sure. Uh, it's not showing. Oh, sorry about that. It is not showing here. But what you're really dealing with is in the API, you can find the, the magic or basically the command. Let me search because the command here is ticks. And then uh, max, if I'm not mistaken, it ticks. Max, let's see what we can find with ticks. Oh, sorry, I need to make sure it's in the API. We have to be in the API here. I guess I can just search it for here because I forgot about it. Ah, yeah, here, this is the one. If we search on ticks, you can see a linear scale option. So this is only for linear, and then we can indicate here the following. This is not in the documentation. It's somewhere in the API. Probably they're working on it, they will make it. But basically, they have another one. It's called the max ticks limits, which is a number, all right? So all we need to do is this here, there we indicate here, for example, in your case, you only wanted six. So we can say here, max ticks will be six. I don't recommend you to do this. I'll show you another way to, to soft code this, by the way. That's more better. Let's save that first. So I just want to show you this. And then here, we refresh. What happens is now we have reduced the amount of ticks. What I want to do now, of course, is because look, this is not practical. The moment we have here, more values, well, let's duplicate or let's, I'll just double it. Instead of 12, we now have uh, 24. And then here, same story. We save that, refresh, now we get a problem. This is probably not what you want because now we have here too few ticks or maybe you want even more ticks here. So what we can do is we're going to use a way to calculate how many ticks we really have. If you've seen what we did, you probably figure out in charge as the label is the, the value where you work with and this one here determines your ticks so what we have to do here is we have to basically grab this value here so in here we could basically say here 
the label item. What we could do here is the following. We can say here, uh, let me just get that one. We need to grab this in the data, which is data dot, let's see if this works, data sets. And this is zero, oh, zero dot. And then what we want to do is we want to grab the labels dot length. So if we do this, we will get a certain value. Let's save that and refresh. Oh, all right, that doesn't work. Let's make sure it should be like this or no. All right, the reason why probably is we need to grab it with, it's gonna be the property of length. Fair enough, makes sense. If we do it like this, it probably will be able to read, but there is no, no value here defined. So what we need to do here is we need to grab the item here. Probably we might need to move this out. So let's see if we can do that one as well. Or we can do the following here. This, let's see if this works. Chart, first of all, but because we didn't, we didn't uh, give a reference part here. So let's see if we can find the answer here. No, all right. So this doesn't work. So what I have to do here, probably this would make far more sense. We put this out here. We're going to give it a constant. And this constant can be called the labels. And the labels equals all of this. Here we put in this, and then of course it's easier because then we can just grab it out here. Because here probably we need to do here chart, we have to put an argument in here, and we have no argument, so it cannot grab the data here. So this is the issue here. So if I do this now and I say here dot length, we should have a nice result. Unexpected here on the cons, unexpected token, 24. What's going on here? Um, let's see, the comma here is not allowed, save that. There we are. All right, so what was the issue was of course here this. This you have to have here brackets or this, this comma is definitely not allowed. So we have this here. Now we have 24. Because if we count this as well, we can do this console log, I will show you, then we soft code this. Console.log here save this you can see here 24 all right solution here then is this divide by two save that remove this now we have this here so this is now automatically calculated and looped through it understands and it's soft coded for you so if you would have you back to 12 only so we're going to remove uh let's see here this is purple purple all right so we're going to remove again the remaining ones we only have this one here and here the last value was three so we have to look here that one all right so i'm going to remove this as well so we have 12 values here save that refresh we have you one two three four five six labels showing on the ticks and this is basically the way you can do it use this here it will be very beneficial for you so i hope this was very clear and if you have any questions put them in the comment section below Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoy it. And if you enjoy this video, you probably will enjoy this one as well. And if you're interested in Chart.js, check out in the description box the link directing to my Chart.js course where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel.